Hi guys, I hope you're well. I have been led to make you this word. Um, it's really important. I'm going to read a verse to you from Esther 414. We're going to do a little study on this, okay? Just a small one, but it's for our good. And it reads, For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will come for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? I want to say to you today, if there is something that you feel frightened about speaking up about, or if you feel that there is something that you you need to voice, if there is someone that you need to make petition for or you that, that you need to intercede for and you feel that the Lord is calling you to do that, I urge you to do it. Because Esther would have missed her purpose completely had she allowed fear to overtake her and, and had she decided not to do what she was being called to do. What Mordecai said to her, yet who knows if you were called for such a time as this, if all of this if all of this preparation, if you becoming queen was just so that you could do this one act, if you could carry out this one act, if you could do this one deed. And I'm saying the same to you today. I do feel that we are in a place and in a time, many of us, where we are being called to action. And it's very, we feel weary. We feel weary. We are tired we have been battling we've been in spiritual warfare for so long but the word of god tells us in galatians please check out the description box i always say it for the exact you know where you can find in scripture the things that i reference don't grow tired of doing good for in the due time you will reap the harvest it's always just when you shouldn't have given up that people give up OK, because that's when Satan intensifies his attacks and his coming against you and his whisperings of doubt and, and his smoke and mirrors increase. Don't fall for it, because, you know, it says in Revelation, again, I'll put it in the description box where it comes from. That cowards. Will be the first they are listed as the first to go into the lake of fire or to be cast away. And that's because no one can come to God and please him without faith. No one. And if you're a coward, you're useless to the Lord. You're not allowing him to fill you, you being the vessel and he, you being the clay and he being the potter. You're the pot and he's the potter. He's the one doing the shaping. If you're cowardly, you're going to hinder that process. If you're fearful, the Lord told us, the word of God tells us, which is God telling us directly that he did not give us a spirit of fear. Perfect love casts out fear. If you love the Lord perfectly, what are the commandments? If you love the Lord perfectly, you, you will be very useful to the Lord. He who lays down his life for my sake will find it. When you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, you go where it leads. The commandments are to love God, one, love God with all your heart, mind and soul. And two is like it to love one another as you love yourself. It's like it, meaning that's God's will that you love one. You love others the way you love yourself, meaning he wants you to look after yourself also that you, you, you're, you are where he dwells. Emmanuel, God with us. He dwells within your temple. Bringing it back to this verse, the Lord has really placed it on my heart and he's been speaking to me. And this verse struck out and stuck out to me. Because. Let's read it again. If you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will. Arrive for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Remember, God's purposes, God is always, God is not a respecter of persons. He's always, his will will be done. And he wants to use you and he's a God of relationship. He wants you to come into agreement with him and trust him and have faith 
in what he's doing in your life, even when it looks crazy or you don't know what's going on. He told us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. But that's why faith, it requires something of you as well, which is that trust. It's that trust. It requires a leap of faith, if you like. There you go. It's in that saying even. He said, be of good courage. So there may be something, that's what I feel like God is telling me, why he's made me make this video is there may be something that you're being called to do, that you're fearful of the repercussions or the consequences, or you feel like you're going to be, you're going to come under attack if you do it. But God wants to see that you are faithful to him. He is the master of your life. He's not going to direct you to do anything that will harm you. It may seem like that at first. It may feel that way, just as it did with Esther. But it will have its rewards. You just have to believe that. You have to believe that. And especially if it's if it's something he's calling you to do, pray about it. But you you can't disobey God. We we have to we have to obey him. We have to obey him. It's a loving obedience. It's not obeying like a dog. For those that may not be in Christ, seeing this coming across this video and being compelled to watch it, still watching. It's not that kind of obedience. It's like the Roman soldier said to him, said to the Lord Jesus, only say the word and I know it will be done because I, being, um, being command of many, I know that when I say the word, I send this one here and I send that one there. They do it. Likewise, I mean, they would, they would be dismissed. They were of no use to him. They would be of no use. They wouldn't be good soldiers if they didn't follow the commands. And we have a loving father. We have a loving relationship with Jesus, with Father God through Jesus and with Jesus. It's, it's Jesus. And if we have no use to him, if we don't do as he says, then we're not abiding in him. And what did he say about being cut off? So, like I said, this the Lord gave this verse to me and I know it's because there's something that you're meant to do and you're fearful of and it may very well involve the fact that you are staying silent that's not what the Lord wants maybe this is the time you need to speak up and remember speaking up doesn't always have to mean verbally it could be that and there's an action that you need to take or that you need to make your presence known in order to assist somebody else because it is about assisting someone else this word because again it was for the Jews and that person or that group they are they are they're going to receive the help that they need anyway and how are you going to feel knowing that you could have helped and that you didn't because i tell you a lot of people they love the harvest everybody wants to reap the harvest but they don't like sowing and they don't like tilling the soil they don't like the hard work where is everybody when the hard work needs to be put in but when come harvest time everyone's there <laughs> everyone's there. everyone wants their share but are you owed a share and furthermore, it's not even about what can you get out of it? What is in it for you? What is in it for you is doing the right thing, especially in the eyes of God. Are you a friend of God? Are you friends with him? Does he know you? You may know of him, but do you know him? And does he know you? So there was that scripture that the Lord directed me to and wanted me to make this message about. And yes, the emphasis was also on the last bit. Who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Don't miss your calling. Don't miss your purpose. Look, God's always going to bring things back. But why, why embark down a lane that you may not have had to bark down? Why embark down a, a road that may take longer to get to where you're travelling to when you're just there, when you're right there? All you've got to do is take that left and there you are. Why are you going to go all around town again to come back there? All because you didn't have the faith to trust and believe your father in heaven. <laughs> God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ. I hope you receive this word with gladness. Remember, we love Esther to this day. We, we, we want to, especially the, the women, my sisters in Christ, that I'm speaking to, we 
we reference Esther quite a lot in, in various different um, pathways that we may be taking, such as the Esther fast and things like that. Let's emulate her truly in the way she fulfilled her purpose. And there's a theme here as well, because the Lord had me made a video on Mary and that was about her saying yes to God. That word was about the way she said yes to God willingly, even though it could have, she wasn't fearful. She said, let it be so, let God's will be so. And even to the cross, she 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 suffered at the foot of the cross with her son also. She, or she said yes to God. And he was who he spoke, she was who he spoke about from the very beginning. When he cursed Satan. So we want to be like that. We want to be useful to the to the Lord. I want to be a weapon for God. I, I mean, he he told Satan that he that the woman and her seed were going to be his weapons against him. They they were going to be what cursed him, the snake, <laughs> that would later on be representative of a curse. When Moses lifted up the snake in the desert. So definitely the theme that the Lord has been placing on my heart and to pass on to you as well is about being of good courage, not allowing fear to overtake you, being strong in your faith, trusting God's purpose for you, even if it looks like it could be your end, just being obedient and trusting him. It went well for Esther and God is faithful. He's not a respecter of persons. Why should you be any different? God loves you just as much. It went well for Esther and it will go well for you. I love you with the love of Christ. Take care. God bless you. I pray this word receives who's meant to receive it. Amen.